starseeds, welcome back to Irene the Cocoa Queen. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to make veggie pot pies. Now these are really delicious with a flaky crust and nice creamy vegetable interior. And this recipe is very special. You can cook it for your guests on Christmas and it works really well for any type of holiday. So before we get into the video, I just wanted to let you guys know that Greg and I are coming out with a recipe book and it's going to include all of my best recipes, including many that I haven't shared with anybody. So we're really excited about that and we'll keep you posted as to when you can actually buy the recipe book. So. I think we can get into the kitchen now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are here every single week providing you with delicious recipes. So there's two parts to this recipe. It's the crust and also the filling of the veggie pot pie. So we're gonna start with the crust. So to a clean bowl, we're gonna be adding in 600 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, just to give it a little bit of extra flavor. And of course we want a buttery, beautiful crust. So we're gonna be adding in 250 grams of very cold cubed butter. So obviously I have used vegan butter. And right now I'm gonna be adding in a half cup of coconut cream. Now let me tell you a little bit about the coconut cream that I'm using. So the coconut cream I'm using here is from a can and the brand I'm using is Biona. And what you're gonna do is when you're at the grocery store shopping for your coconut cream, you're gonna look on the back of the can and you're gonna make sure that the ratio of cream to water is 85% coconut cream and 15% water. Now my Biona uh, cream that I use is called whipping cream. So it's rich and creamy and there's hardly any water in it. Okay, so once you do that and you're using it in your recipe, you wanna make sure that you are using the cream at room temperature. So you're not going to refrigerate it at all. So I never understood why people go out and buy ready-made crust for their desserts and things. Um, I quite like just getting my hands dirty and really being intimate with my food. So at this point, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get your hands in all of these ingredients and sort of crumble the flour and the butter and the coconut cream between your fingers. You're sort of squishing the butter and the flour together. So what you're gonna achieve is a crumble, sort of um, breadcrumb-like consistency. And I'll show you guys once I've finished with mine. So this is the consistency we're looking for. It sort of looks like coarse crumbs. So once you've achieved that, now the only thing left to do is add in some ice cold water. So I've just got a cup here. I added three ice cubes and filled up the cup with some water. And now I'm just going to place, pour in the water a tablespoon at a time. That's two, three tablespoons, nine. So. I've added in nine tablespoons. I'm gonna mix the dough and see if it needs a final tablespoon of water. So what you wanna do is press the dough between your fingers like so. And right at this point, you don't wanna over mix because remember, we're still gonna roll out our dough later on after it chills in the fridge. And white flour does have a tendency to stiffen up after it's baked if you've over mixed it. So right now, what we're gonna do is just get the dough somewhat together. I'm going in with one last tablespoon, so all together, that's 10 tablespoons of water. And once again, I'm gonna mix it up until I'm able to form a dough ball. So we've got our dough in a nice ball, and at this point, you can either place it in some um, plastic wrap and into the fridge for an hour, or you can do like I'm doing and just place it into a bowl that has a lid. One thing that I wanna remind you of is if you find your dough is too dry, maybe you didn't measure the ingredients properly, um, what you can do is just add a little bit more water. But if you measure the ingredients well, you shouldn't have a problem. So we're popping on the lid and this is going in the fridge for one hour. Now that our crust is resting in the fridge, we're gonna go ahead and make the filling for these beautiful veggie pot pies. So to a saucepan, we're going to be placing four tablespoons of vegan butter of your choice. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna let these beautiful cubes melt. So our butter has almost melted. You can use a whisk to hurry it along. And now what we're going to do is add in the flour. 
That's four tablespoons of flour. Now you want to whisk continuously. At this point, you're going to add in two cups of broth. This is vegan broth and it's actually homemade by uh, roasting potatoes and carrots and onions in the oven. So you just want to give this a good stir and heat it up for five minutes. You don't want any lumps in this. So make sure you heat, you heat it up well. So at this point, we're going to add in some spices. We're going to be adding in a, two tablespoons of dried thyme, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, uh, pepper to taste, and also salt to taste. So that is going all in. Let's give it a whisk. So you can see that the sauce is starting to thicken a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to add in the frozen peas. And also, I cook these, these are pre-cooked um, carrots and potatoes that I chopped into small little cubes. So these are also going in. I've got three cups of carrots and two cups of potatoes here. So now I'm going to switch to a spoon. So you should cook this for another five to 10 minutes. I'm just waiting for my sauce to thicken even more. And then we're gonna go in with the final, most delicious ingredient. So you can see how the sauce has thickened. That's exactly what we want. And at this point, what you can do is give it a taste. And if it needs anything at all, maybe it needs some salt, some pepper, maybe it needs some extra um, maggi or a broth powder, you can also add that in. I myself, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and a little bit of organic vegan broth. And lastly, what I'm gonna do is add in some cream. Now what I'm gonna do is add in coconut cream. This is coconut whipping cream, the same cream we added into our pie crust. And I'm adding in three tablespoons. This is just gonna give it a little bit of extra flavor, a little bit of extra creaminess, and it's just something I personally like to do. So just give it a good mix. Oh yeah, well that looks really, really, really good. And you can use any kind of vegetables you like. I mean, I adore mushrooms in my vegetable pot pies, but unfortunately I don't have any on hand, but you can go ahead and use mushrooms, uh, leeks, or any other vegetable that you desire. So it's time to assemble the pot pies, but be sure before you fill your crust, you need to let the filling cool down completely, or at least almost completely. So what we're gonna do now that we have our dough out of the fridge, is dust our countertop. Make sure your countertop is clean. And you just wanna dust it a little bit so the dough doesn't stick to the counter and also dust your rolling pin. And what we're going to do is take the dough, place it in the center, and just roll it out. Just flip it around and then continue rolling. And also, you don't, uh, if you prefer, you can actually roll your dough out onto some parchment paper, and that way, that way you're certain that the dough won't stick to the countertop, obviously. Right, so we need to take some of the dough out and place it in here, so then it'll be the, for the bottom of the crust, okay? And then we're gonna fill the crust with the filling. So what we're gonna do is just cut the dough. and then place it over the ramekin. And at this point, you can just manipulate it a little bit with your hands. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually very forgiving, this crust. So even if you get breaks and cracks, which you won't, but worst case scenario. And just with your hands, just press it against the wall of the ramekin. So once you're satisfied with how the dough looks in the ramekin, what you're gonna do is take some of that filling, place it inside. You don't wanna overfill it, but you want enough so that it's not just all crust. So now that our ramekin is filled, all we're gonna do is 
cover it up with a thin piece of crust. So this, we're gonna use this as a stencil. Press down, or you can use a knife just to cut around. And we're just gonna place it on top and then bring the crust around. It doesn't have to be complicated, not at all. Just bring it around any way you can. If you feel like this is too much crust, you can always just cut it off. So what I'm doing here is just tucking in the dough, making sure that it's not gonna open on me in the oven. So this is another method you can use. You sort of take your two fingers, your thumb and your index finger, and then you, and then you take your index finger on your other hand and you sort of squeeze in. You squeeze in like that. So this basically just pinches everything together. And I don't want you to worry about this part. Like it doesn't have to look perfect. Mine certainly don't look perfect and they don't need to because once you dig in, it's gonna be delicious. So there you go. The last thing we're gonna do is just make a little slit in the center, just to let some of that air out. So I'm going to do the same for this little guy here, brushing him with coconut oil. And these are gonna go in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. So another thing you can do is take a, a cupcake uh, or muffin tray, and what you can do is just flour and butter it a little bit so that your pies don't stick after they're baked. And just take your dough, and this is such a messy, like I'm not even trying here to be professional at all. And you don't need to be. You can just take your dough and sort of place it inside like that. So you're pressing against the walls of the muffin tray. And then you can just take your filling, place it inside. Oh yeah. And what you can do is just wrap, just take the sides that are hanging over and just wrap up your pie. Like so. This is just another way that I wanted to demonstrate for you. And then once again, you can brush the tops with coconut oil or butter or oil or anything of your choice. Okay, so we just got them out of the oven and look how adorable these, these ones are. So these are the ones that I baked in the muffin trays. So there's a really cute idea and everybody at Christmas time can get their own little uh, pot pie. This one is a little bit bigger, so I don't know if you, this would probably be for like a main meal with maybe some mashed potatoes and gravy on the side. <laughs> okay guys, we're cracking it open. Oh my God. Oh, yes. Guys, it smells delicious in here. It almost smells like we're baking cookies. Like the crust is just so fragrant. Look at that, delicious. This is so delicious. And again, you can use any kind of vegetables that you like. Mushrooms would work really well in this. So this is such a perfect little recipe for the holidays. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Also in terms of baking time, at the 40 minute mark, you might find that your dough is a little bit undercooked depending on how thick you've made your design on top. Um, so I recommend that you just check it and if it needs a little bit more baking, you can bake it up to 55 minutes or even up to an hour. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you tried it out. And uh, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You know we're always giving you amazing plant-based recipes on a weekly basis. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified every single time we upload a video. And smash that like button. I'll see you guys very soon for the next video.